Our judge Thomas Cohen from Great Barrington, Maine. Tom has been breeding Shelties, Shetland Sheep Dogs, for over 50 years. He's under the famed uh, kennel name McDega. He handled for 30 years and then be got his judge's license and is now at this point in his career where he's judging the herding group of Westminster. But he is one of our uh, well-known, very successful breeder and handlers. But as I said, he's Sh Shetland Sheepdogs, Collies. Those are, that's the background, but of course he knows all of the herding breeds. And he's quite well versed in all of the breeds. To Michael LeFay. Originally bred to herd cattle in the rugged Australian outback, the Australian cattle dog is tough, courageous, intelligent, and possesses great stamina. Their loyalty, devotion to duty, and protective instincts make them self-appointed guardians of the family and property. Adult coats are flat-lying, weather-resistant, and can be either red or blue. This is Australian Cattle Dog, number 19. So we discussed that there's going to be different types of herding. These were drovers, so these drove cattle in wide or confined areas over large distances. And one of the unique things about this dog is that this area between the eyes is called a stop. And they call for a moderate That's stop because it protected the dog if the cattle kicked the dog, it would slide off its head. So that little detail protected the dog. It's all in the details. It's all in the details. The Australian Shepherd was actually developed in Western United States, where this versatile and intelligent breed has been valued by ranchers for decades as an exceptional herder. An eminently trainable dog, their athleticism and skill led them to succeed in a wide range of endeavors from search and rescue to obedience, agility, and flyball events. This is Australian Shepherd, number 24. We saw earlier uh, dock diving, Jamie's report in our, in our Bulldog Club. But this this one this dog actually does have some dock diving titles. That's incredible. Well, you can tell she's very athletic. The breed is very athletic, and I'm sure she's in fabulous uh, physical condition. She looks like it from here. This is the number one Aussie, of course, ribbon, and number two herding dog officially. Thank you. Right around. And well, just to note, they're not from Australia, even though it's in the name. They're not from Australia. They're American bred dog. Love the eyes. The Bearded Collie, or Beardy, is an old ink Scottish breed that achieved recognition in the United States in 1977. It is happy to work sheep, play with children, jump through hoops, or do anything with their people. Beardies are independent thinkers, so early fun and imaginative training is the key. This is Bearded Collie, number 12. Gail, I think you're going to have something to say about this breed. It's kind of close to you, isn't it? It is. This is the breed that my parents bred and I grew up showing and handled for many, many years. And this is uh, Paige, who's being handled by Julie Kempster, who I've known for a very long time. I have as well. I actually <laughs> showed some of their dogs from back in the day. <laughs> this is from Canada, that's right. Julie Kempster and Bisak are have been very successful breeders of bearded collies and had top winning Canadian dogs and American dogs. Yeah, most entries uh, from a foreign okay, country, right around. Canada, followed by Japan, Mexico, and South Korea in our coverage over these two nights here. That was the Beardy Bounce. This is what they're known <laughs> to do. The Beauceron is an old and distinct French breed, bred and selected for their aptitude to herd and guard large flocks of sea. The ideal Beauceron is a well-balanced, solid dog of good height and well-muscled without heaviness or coarseness. A formidable dog, he commands respect wherever he goes. This is Beauceron, number nine. And as you said, Jason, there are different jobs, different functions. Obviously, this dog's a little larger, a little heavier. Okay. Was used for guarding. Sure, it was kind of a dual-purpose dog, so it was a guardian of sheep. But it, was all, it would also move two to three hundred heads of sheep over many miles each day. And the French Army used the Beauceron in World War I and II uh, and helping with bomb detection, among other things, messenger as well. Right, and it shows the versatility. They were police dogs, as you said, military dogs. It's, it is a breed that really does require Thank a you, job. Right so if you're considering them, 
if you're an active person, that's a dog that's great for you because they want to work in some way, shape, or form. alert and intelligent dog, bred to herd and guard flocks and fields. This breed's main difference besides his region of origin is his rough, coarse coat. This is Belgian Lacanois, number eight. And this is the first of our Belgian herding breeds. But as you, I'd like to go back to that, Jason, that these herding okay. dogs need to have a job. They were bred to work. They want to work. And if you don't do something with them, whether it's fun in a sport or give them a real job job, they might start getting into trouble. Yeah, they, be, they, they, they are always on the move. They're thinking. They're such intelligent dogs that if you bore them, it's just like an intelligent person. They, they can't get into trouble <laughs> if you leave them to their own devices. That's great. Oh, look, right look at that, just standing there wagging its tail, just having a blast out here today. We love to see that. These dogs are just enjoying themselves. The Belgian Malinois is one of three similar Belgian herding dogs recognized in the country. The Malinois is distinguished from the other Belgians by a short coat ranging in color from fawn to mahogany. A proud, agile, strong dog full of life that excels at police work, search and rescue, and performance competition. This is Belgian Malinois, number 11. When you're talking about service since 1908, this breed, working with New York City Police, Belgian Malinois. The intensity of this breed is amazing. You know, they they will jump walls that are 12 feet high in when they're going to, on searches for you know any kind of criminal activity. They they'll go over a wall that you that a human can't even scale. It's it's just amazing their agility. That their their strength is unsurpassed. And they're selected to do those jobs because of their predictability. The predict predictability predictability, excuse me, of our purpose-bred dog makes them perfect for those types of jobs. Let's check in with Jamie Little. Well, Chris, you may have noticed tonight that many of the handlers are wearing a purple lapel ribbon, and that's in support of the Purple Leash Project. It's Purina's initiative to create more pet-friendly domestic violence shelters in the U.S. where abuse survivors can escape and heal with their pets. Visit purpleleashproject.com to learn more. Michael, back to you. The Belgian Sheepdog with this distinctive long black coat was originally bred as a versatile working farm dog and family dog. Herding the flock and guarding the home, today they are active and successful in many events, such as herding, obedience, tracking, and agility trials. This is Belgian Sheepdog, number 11. It looks like if you took a, a Collie and a German Shepherd and kind of mashed them together there, would you? <laughs> come up with a Belgian sheepdog or at least well you know the, the interesting thing about these is they're they're Thank a little right different around. shape than those dogs because they're very compact I mean these this is another one of those silhouette breeds where we want to see this square shape and I, I can tell you I've been taught by the, the experts they always require that square shape the Belgian Traverne is the fourth of the Belgian breed the coat color is generally fond of russet mahogany with a black overlay Bred to herd and guard, these dogs excel as search and rescue dogs and in all areas of competition. The breed's versatile and graceful, eye-catching appearance are prized by their owners. This is Belgian Traverne, number 23. And this is a great example of what we were just talking about. This dog has several titles in other sports. Utility dog, excellent, which is a high-level obedience. It's obedience uh, master rally it's done all of those uh, that work and it's in part because they're very trainable they were originally bred to work with man or for people and so they take command they learn command and cues and they can excel in other sports muscular frame proudly carried head and Thank of course you. that right unique coat you. it's beautiful yep. coat. base color can be warm fawn or mahogany or a little black the Bergamasco Sheepdog is an ancient alpine herding and guarding breed. This medium to large, muscular, and heavy bone dog has an abundance of coat that forms flocks, allowing them to blend in with the sheep and providing insulation from the climate and protection from predators. 
The Bergamasco Sheepdogs are intelligent, loyal, and eager to please, making them a wonderful family companion. This is Bergamasco Sheepdog, number 12. So right away we're looking at this coat. Yes. And, um, yeah. We'll see another dog later, the pulley in the group. And this is not the same type of hair. So this, these are called flocks. And it's made up of three different textures of hair. You have the undercoat, the outer coat, and the goat hair. And the undercoat's short and dense and fine in texture. The goat hair's long and straight and rough. And the outer coat's woolly. So that's why you see these varying textures throughout the look of that dog. How do you keep that clean? That's you. you just Thank bathe you. it right just like any other dog. Bathing all right, but then yeah. drying might take day. You know, it, two or three it, hair it takes a little while to dry the dog. <laughs> yeah, I saw some of them in the, uh, in the grooming tent. Or at least some work on that. The Berger Picard is thought to be the oldest of the French herding breeds. The Berger Picard is a medium-sized dog with a rustic, tousled appearance. Congratulations. Naturally erect ears and maybe fawn or brindle in coloration. People oriented and loyal, the Berger Picard makes a good family pet if properly socialized. This is Berger Picard, number seven. This is a great example of a very naturally shown dog. It's a natural coat. It's not supposed to be overly groomed. And I think we like that about it. It's like that tousled, very you know, rustic appearance. Yeah, and it goes back to their roots and origins. I mean, these dogs didn't grow a lot of hair, but they had a protective coat that was easy to maintain. You know, when you were herding sheep, you didn't, you didn't have to have a dog that needed to be groomed. You had to have a dog with a natural coat that was protective, and that's what this coat is for. Thank you. Right around. Requires monthly brushing. Monthly, though, not daily. <laughs> <laughs> I know. That's a good deal. <laughs> big I don't, we better ask him about that. <laughs> Product of Scotland and England, the Border Collie is the premier herding dog. Their ability to manipulate sheep is legendary, as is their prowess in obedience and agility. Although easily trained, they are so highly motivated to work that they are perfect for the farm, but not for apartment dwellings unless provided with plenty of outside activity. This is Border Collie, number 17. So this is the most accomplished of all the herding breeds as far as yeah. its ability and its speed and agility. And what you're going to see when this dog goes from the side is it actually drops its head. And that's because it, it lowers its head while it's moving to be able to see low into the herd. It doesn't have a high carriage because that's not practical for the type of job it did. This is Asher, who's owned by Maddie Tobias and Jessica Aniscoff, number one Border Collie. Known for his victory Thank leap. You. Right around. <laughs> when he wins. Well, <laughs> and you can see that intensity when he All stopped right. at the judge. He just stopped and stared. It's it's really an amazing breed. Okay, and there's that classic low head carriage. Good luck, a dog. The Bouvier de Flandre was developed in the 19th century in the northern hills of France and Belgium. He's been known throughout history as the milk cart dog. His strength and agility, coupled with his intelligence and serene disposition, make him both a strong worker and a fine companion. This is Bouvier de Flandre, number seven. And Link is the top-winning Best in Show dual champion herding dog in AKC history. And that's a big deal. He's a show dog, but he can still achieve in what he was originally bred to do, which is herd. And that's a huge accomplishment. Yeah. And, Gail, you know, you talk about their ability. This breed was really versatile because they actually pulled carts as well. They were kind of an all-purpose farm dog that, you know, you have to think about these people that had these dogs that had to do a job and not just one because they were not practical to have okay. to sustain right their life on a farm. They needed they to, had do to do many everything. jobs. That's right. A protective coat. Handles different weather. The Briard is an ancient breed of France, serving as a sheep herder, guardian, and all-around farm dog. Vigorous, alert, and self-confident, they have the strength and power to do the job for which they are bred. Distinguishing characteristics include a long, wavy coat, dew claws on the rear legs, and a crook at the end of the tail. This is Briard, number seven. 
I, I truly adore this breed. Chris, I can see you're interested in it, too, as well. Well, the expression, right, is kind of a questioning or a frank look when we when we had that glance from... They have a, a lot of unique features. You know, they have the ears up or down, but their movement they describe as quicksilver because they make quick turns, springing starts, and sudden stops. They're an extremely agile breed. Protective family dog. Just kind of treats kids, children. They're as quite the a fox. good guardian dog. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And they will. They they'll herd the children in the house. If you have children <laughs> and, and they think the children's going somewhere they shouldn't, the dog will stop them and push them back into their spot they think they should be. Well, a babysitter. They're a great babysitter. Thank you. Right around. It's been said that they can. A few, just a few Briards can handle 700 her, head of sheep, so they can work together and make it happen. Named for the ancient land of Canaan, its origins dating back to biblical times. The Canaan dog is Israel's only native dog, a herding and sentry dog for the ancient Hebrews. The breed, the breed lived as a feral dog for over 2,000 years in the desert where it survived independently until it was re-domesticated yep. in 1935. This is Canaan Dog, number 12. Okay. <laughs> okay, about halfway out and back. Please. You heard the judge making a sound, trying to get the dog's attention. He's trying to just look at the expression. Sure, that, and that's a key thing too, you know, and it shows their intelligence the look of intensity that some of these dogs should have. You know, and he said that these were re-domesticated. This is a breed that's very unchanged from when it was originated. And it also was more of a perimeter dog, and it did herding work as well. And it was a guardian dog. Right but it wasn't end. necessarily a pet at that time. And, and they've come a long way in their temperament, and they've really brought them around to being a very social dog with the owners. In Welsh, corgi means dwarf dog. The cardigan is the corgi with the tail and is one of the oldest breeds in the British Isles, dating to 1200 B.C. He was developed as an all-purpose farm worker and companion. His willingness and trainability allow him to excel in performance events. This is Cardigan Welsh Corgi, number 21. And, of course, we'll be okay. uh, comparing this to the Pembroke or seeing the Pembroke later. And there are some big differences between those two breeds. Very true, Gail. So, the, you know, this, this dog has the curved forearms that fit around the ribs. It's called a wraparound front. The toes can point slightly outward, unlike the other corgi that we're going to see later. You know, and their front gave them the ability to avoid the cows as they kick because this was a low, this was more of a nipping dog. So they would come in low at the, the legs of the cat. They didn't, they weren't far ranging dogs. They just guided them in by nipping low. So they always had to be this low dog because if they were too tall and too high, they were at risk of injury. Thank you. Look right at that around. stack. That was great. That was beautiful. I mean, that's what we want to see when you come exactly. out here. These dogs just putting on a great show. Just beautiful. Collies originated in Scotland where they were bred to gather, move, and protect sheep. They were selected for herding because they are gentle, alert, and intelligent. The breed comes in two varieties, the rough coat and the smooth coat. One standard is used for both varieties. This is Rough Collie, number 35. So the, the Rough Collie was used to maintain flocks on homes and pastures, and they also stood guard. And we'll see a smooth collie in a few minutes. And, um, you know, the head on this okay, breed is a key fe up. feature. It resembles a blunt, lean, clean wedge. And, of course, the youngest dog to ever win Best in Show at Westminster was a collie. And it was uh, nine months old. Can you imagine? That's amazing. Isn't Bond it? loyalty of Bellhaven. History-making moment. Working our way through the final group of the night. Three tomorrow night, and then Best in Show. This is Casper, who's a multiple Best in Show winner, multiple specialty winner. And and you can see, you can you can see the judge right taking a great look at the head and expression. It's so important in this breed, and the breeder judges will tell you that, that that is the key feature.
Coming up, Smooth Collie, German Shepherd will round things out. They may be herders. They got a lot of personality. The Westminster Kennel Club Dog Show is sponsored by Purina Pro Plan Nutrition That Performs. Well, we are just about ready for our final 16 dogs of the evening. But a quick reminder that tomorrow night we will see 98 dogs, including the seven group winners and, of course, what everyone is waiting for, the crowning of a brand new best in show. But now our final 16 dogs of night one. Let's send it back over to Chris Myers. Yeah, thanks, Jenny. We're finishing up the herding group. Let's head back over to ring announcer Michael Lefebvre. Yeah, now for the second variety of collies, the smooth. While the rough-coated variety was developed for the northern climbs of Scotland, the smooth collie was used primarily as a cattle driver in the south of England. This is smooth collie, number 15. And you saw with his hands, he, he ran his hand the whole way back that head to see how clean and smooth it was. Okay. Then he looked at the profile from the side. It's just such an important factor in this breed when you're judging it. Well, it's what makes a collie a collie, right? You have to right. have that's that. That's what we call breed type. You know, it's the things we call out in the AKC standard that really set it apart from another breed. It's the most important features. And coming back and doing a great stop as well. Okay, thank you, right around. <laughs> we as handlers dream of that when we come back and the dog stops four square perfect and shows a great expression to the judge. He's loving it, tail, tail up, happy. First time ever here at the National Tennis Center. And how about this, the tennis world is watching. Now a tennis analyst, Brad Gilbert, fired up first night for Westminster Kennel Club, 147 years it took to be here, but we're glad to be here at Arthur Ashe. He coached some great players like Agassi, Roddick, Murray. You know, he's not a bad player himself. Michael? The finished lap hunt is a reindeer herding dog from the north of the Arctic Circle. Their double coat is waterproof and serves them well in the coldest climbs. For years, they've been very popular in Scandinavia as family pets. This is Finnish Lapun, number 15. Bandit here is another 
dog from another country coming in from Denmark. Yeah, very close to where they began their work outside of the Arctic Circle. And, you know, they primarily tended hey, to you. reindeer right herds. So, you know, they, they had a little different purpose based on the region that they were in. And you can see the coat. It's a protective coat and beautiful condition. Yeah, originally they would herd reindeer. Way out, Santa. The German Shepherd Dog is a highly intelligent, exceptional family dog who enjoys the endeavors of its owners. Originally bred as a sheep herding and protection dog in Germany, today it is competitive in herding, obedience, agility, and tracking. A very successful as both service dog and a policeman's best friend and protector. This is German Shepherd Dog, number 17. This is Heathcliff, who's being shown by Lenny Brown. You might recognize him. He won the group last year with a different German Shepherd. Okay, go about three But quarters. he's very well known in the Shepherd ring. Yeah, and Lenny did did what I think is the correct way to do it. He apprenticed under a professional handler. He learned his trade, learned to care for the dog, and learned how to show this breed in a breed-specific manner, which is allowing it to have this beautiful flying trot that you see from the side right now. Just a beautiful example of the breed. Rumor 2017 won Best in Show, the most recent of the German Shepherd uh, Best in Show winners. Beautiful yeah, that is. Stack. That's a... When he's showing right he's put for the owner handler who, who recently passed away. Oh, that's too bad. Our condolences. <laughs> the chief dog arrived in Iceland on longboats with the first Viking settlers. A hardy and agile Nordic hurts hurting spits. It has a thick waterproof coat. Confidence in a loyal, lively bearing are typical for this intelligent and happy dog. Highly alert, it will give visitors an enthusiastic and cheerful welcome. This is Icelandic Sheepdog, number 15. Okay. Here we have another therapy dog. Also a farm dog. Halfway out back. Okay. And dog. We talked about those herding abilities. So this dog actually uses its voice to herd the dogs. It doesn't actually, it'll use the voice to move the animals away. <laughs> and so they, it's quite unique. Yeah, they've attempted sometimes to uh, to herd cars. So, so. Well, I can believe this. <laughs> lots of the herding breeds actually try to do that. It's a bad idea. But <laughs> I think on okay, D is uh, right around. Beautiful. Just great on D. I'll tell you, the herding dogs are showing great tonight. They're really coming out and putting on a show. That's what we love to see. Dog of the Vikings. The miniature American Shepherd was developed in California during the 1960s. These dogs were bred for their small size, intelligence, trainability, and herding instinct. This active dog needs both exercise and training. Whether working stock, navigating an agility course, or doing therapy work, the miniature American Shepherd does it all with due diligence. This is American Miniature Shepherd, number nine. Obviously, this looks very similar to the Australian Shepherd. Yeah, and they were used to herd different types of animals, such as goats, you know, so they didn't work with the larger herding livestock. So, you know, then that's why they developed a little bit smaller version so that they could work the, the different types of animals. But an equally intelligent worker, yeah, very strong worker. Okay, thank you. Right around. Steve Jobs, Steven Spielberg have all owned miniature American Shepherds. The Moody is a Hungarian farm dog bred to herd the most stubborn of livestock. A true working dog, the Moody is Known for its courage, trainability, and self-cleaning coat, the breed's ability to quickly learn tasks makes him exceptional in many dog sports. This is Moody, number 11. This breed has, was just AKC recognized recently in the last couple of years, and yet last year was their first okay. year at Westminster. Their owners and trainers tell us that they're very easy to train. They learn things very quickly. You only have to show them or ask them one or two times and they've got it down. How, how often, Gail, do they add new breeds? Well, that depends. There is a very long system with the American Kennel Club. It takes a, a long time for a breed to become AKC recognized. There are several steps to qualifying. 
And so it can take it can take several years. But it's the dedication of the parent club, the national club. Okay, thank you. Right around, please. Who are in place to protect and, and support the breeds. And have them in the Westminster Kettle Club Dog Show. The Norwegian Buhan was once cherished companion of the Vikings. Buhan means farm dog in Norwegian, and he is a versatile breed that herds livestock, guards property, and has been used for hunting game. He is a double-coated, squarely built, spitz-type dog with an intelligent, friendly expression. This is Norwegian Buhan, number seven. I caught that. You got that, Chris? Spitz, yes, yeah, all coming night. back. I told you it was coming Keeping back notes. again. Now, this is notable. This dog has done incredibly well and broken all kinds of records for its breed. And, you know, it was interesting you brought up about new breeds coming in. And I, I want to clarify, those aren't new breeds. Those They're breeds just new to, to the United States. The Moody has been around in Hungary for a very long time. But when we bring these dogs over to our country, then we have to set up a new pedigree system. So that... They're not a newly created breed, so I want to be very no, clear. Good point. Th that's an ancient breed that has been around for hundreds of years. Yeah, we all get moody when we're hungry. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the Old English Sheepdog emerged as a distinct breed in the mid-19th century, evolving from herding stock. Known also as a bobtail with a harsh double coat, resistant to weather and brambles, he excelled as a drover handling cattle or sheep on the way to market. This is Old English Sheepdog, number seven. This dog's being shown by Taylor Johnson, who's a junior handler. But her family is very involved and in, has done very well. Uh, Old English. Okay, about halfway out. Yeah. In, in fact, her father won a reserve best in show. Taylor's father, not the dog necessarily. That was the grandfather, Swagger, who won reserve best in show. So the judge Two gonna times. shake off a little bit of the dog hair. But how do you? you oh no, she knows how to show this Look dog. At the, yeah, the crowd. And you know, you asked yeah. about how they went over the dog. They have to feel this big, broad back skull. They have a unique body shape to them that the judge has to feel the top line rising and lowering. You know, and the pear shape reversed from the, what the Pekingese is, so it's the pear shape the other way. So there's so many unique features of this breed, a shambling walk that they have to have. And so you'll see okay, her when you. she right starts around. walking slowly to begin, and it shows that shambling gait. And Sven, the dog, is number one Old English Sheepdog right now. She's got a bright future ahead, for sure. The second corgi breed is the Pembroke Welsh Corgi, which is developed in Wales as a livestock and family dog. And dates from at least the 10th century. The Pembroke is recognizable by their foxy face, dirty build, and moderately long, low shape. Physical agility and affectionate temperament are paramount characteristics of the Pembroke. This is Pembroke Welsh Corgi, number 14. So we saw the, the cardigan corgi earlier, and this, this Pembroke... Obviously, it does not have the tail, like the Cardian did. Pembroke, you can just picture it that way. And the foxy expression okay, is so pivotal to this breed. About halfway Their legs that. are straight, whereas the Cardigan can turn out slightly. So their structure's a little different. Their lengths are different. So there's, there's some differences between the two. And that's what the judge is looking for. They want to make sure that one doesn't cross the line into the other. And, and Heidi was her uh, the 2022 National Specialty winner, which, of course, is an awesome win. It's a huge win in that breed because it's such a competitive breed with enormous entries. So to win the National, it's incredible. It's an incredible win. And, of course, with the recent coronation, we must say that, of course, this is a favorite okay, of the you. royal right family. Yes. And tonight we'll have our own coronation. Or tomorrow night officially, right? The right? best in show will crown the champ. <laughs> First documented in the 13th century, the Polish Lowland Sheepdog is a herding dog of considerable ability. The double coat is long, dense, and shaggy. Being strong-willed, they do best with a master that is willing to train and socialize them. This is Polish Lowland Sheepdog, number nine. 
Okay. So you're gonna the see the land. you're gonna see this dog with the coat. You know, we talk about coats a lot in these groups because the coat was protective. And you know, these dogs hail from Poland, so the, the elements in the lowlands of Poland were very challenging and, and hard on the dogs, so they had to develop this thick, dense coat. And they say, you know, once once this dog is trained, they can work without human guidance in the field. They're that intelligent. I believe it. There's a lot of dog under that coat. When you go to go, when you go over them, they actually are are very heavy bone. Okay, thank you. Not right a, around. And a lot of dogs. Sometimes a lot of food gets caught in the beard. Well, that happens to lots of people. Oh. Even the people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> have, you, have you seen my dad? Or? The Just pulley kidding. is an Please ancient breed of Hungary, introduced by the migration of the Magyars over a thousand years ago. He has the same corded coat as seen on the common door. Adept at handling large herds and flocks, the Puli is keenly intelligent and deeply devoted to its owners. This is Puli, number seven. So we talked about the Moody earlier. This is another one of the Hungarian breeds. And we, the Bergamasco I described its coat. So this is actually a corded dog. So the corded dogs are the Puli, the Commodore, which we'll see tomorrow. The Poodle that we saw can be corded as well as a Havanese. And it requires a very specific coat texture. This handler's Bill McFadden, who has won Best in Show at Westminster before. A few other breeds. A little skip with a jump. They almost look like they're on a conveyor belt or something. Or <laughs> well, that's that's a it's a distinctive gait this breed has. They're quick stepping, animated, and it shows their athleticism and elasticity. They don't bounce. It's that's a misnomer. There's no wasted motion. Thank you. Right around. But they do have a lightness to them. But that's a true herding dog's movement. You're not supposed to have wasted motion. No. An ancient Hungarian herding breed, the Pumi, was developed by shepherds who developed a dog that would herd their cattle, sheep, and pigs on the small farms of western Hungary. This medium-sized spirited dog with a wavy and curly hair is intelligent, willing to work, and a quick learner. The breed is characterized by its square outline, circular tail, semi-erect ears, and whimsical expression. This is Pumi, number 16. They do have a whimsical expression, yes. They're okay. very cute, yes, yes. But they are a serious herding dog. Very serious. They're a strong-tempered dog. They mm -hmm. really are. They're, mm -hmm. they're intelligent. Um, and, Gail, actually, this dog, we talk about the origin countries, but this dog actually hails from Hungary, right? It was born in Hungary. <laughs> That's awesome. So I heard a bark, someone chiming in from the... <laughs> One of the rebel rousers Show on the other side. Yeah. <laughs> Don't forget about Thank me. You. Right around. And you can see this coat. It's these corkscrews or curls over the body. And they're about one and a half to three inches long. We're showcasing some of the most extraordinary dogs across the globe. But Saturday, showcasing some of baseball's biggest stars. Manny Machado, the Padres, take on Mookie Betts and their rival Dodgers. Some will see the defending World Series champion Astros facing Tim Anderson of the White Sox. It's Saturday, 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific time on Fox. Brainy and Shepard hails from the Pyrenees Mountains of France. They were traditional working companions of the larger dog, the Great Pyrenees, and were bred to herd sheep and other livestock. They come in two varieties, smooth-faced and rough-faced, referring to short or shaggy hair. They excel in agility and also make wonderful family companions. This is Pyrenean Shepherd, number 15. So a lot of times we talk about them working solitarily or with another one of its breed. This breed actually worked with the Great Pyrenees. So the Great Pyrenees would hide in the flock as a guardian, and this, this dog would actually fulfill the role and Thank you. Right work around. with the Pyrenees. And they have a really unique saying. It says their gait is known to look as it shaved the earth. Wow. Mm. And you can see this as it's going right now. It looks yeah. like it's shaving the earth. That's a cool description. Beautifully shown. The Shetland Sheepdog originated in the Shetland Islands, developing there and on the British mainland as a popular, affectionate companion and farm dog. His color may be sable, ranging from light brown to dark mahogany, black or blue merle. The Sheltie's intense desire to please his owner makes him an outstanding worker in obedience and agility trials. This is Shetland Sheepdog, 
number 27. So they have a registered name and then they have a call name, right? So this, the call name here is Fitz. Registered name can take in a lot of things. That's right. The registered name usually has the kennel mm -hmm. name where the you dog was bred. And then uh, whatever, maybe. a theme yeah. of some kind, if you'd like. Now, now Fitz here is being handled by Jenny Hines, who's part of a long time uh, generation after generation of Sheltie breeders. And, and this dog won uh, best breed last year at Westminster. Of course, this is Mr. Cohen's original breed, so be taking a close look, as he will with all. But no, when it's wonder. your own breed, how that yeah. differs. Thank you, right you around. Think, Jason, yes. you're, you? you're hard on them and compassionate to them at the same time. <laughs> it's a real challenge to evaluate your own breed. Spanish water dog is a rustic, medium-sized, curly-coated, all-purpose farm dog used primarily to herd goats, sheep, and cattle. This breed is devoted to its people and happiest when it has a function to perform. Because of its intelligence, trainability, and athleticism, this breed excels in all dog sports. This is Spanish water dog, number 11. Yeah, there's a lot going on there, Jason okay. Hale. Let's see. Uh, that, that would be tough. Well, and you know, when you have coats like this, you you reach into those. To sort through. Yeah, and you have to feel through the coat. We typically lift the hair a little bit and then slide our hands in to feel how the body's structured. And here we have another young handler, I notice. Another junior out there looking great. Doing Candace it. Lancaster. Is there any age restrictions, limits? Thank not, you. No, right you around. Can sure the You're out, you go out there. All right. There's actually a new competition called Pee Wee, which is for the really young oh, children yeah. in the okay. show. The Swedish Valhund is a very old spitz type breed dating from the days of the Vikings. Small, powerful, and fearless, they've been kept for centuries as all purpose farm dogs for herding cattle, rodent control, and alerting farmers to visitors. The double coated characteristic harness markings are essential features of this breed. The tail may be long, stubbed, or bobbed. This is Swedish Valhund, number 15. So they're said to be chatty, you know, the yips and the howls. They, what, what do they call it? Argle, bargles, you know, the terminology they use. Well, you know, it's, oftentimes the herding dogs have to use their voice. And border collies use I. There's different types of herding, but using your voice is often some, sometimes the best way to go. That's, what, that's what we do. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and they were guardians, so, you know, they alerted sometimes. If they saw something coming to the, the flock, they would alert that way. That tail. Thank you. Right Just around. the happiest so little chap. It's wonderful. He was wagging the tail on the table and everything. Just ready to go. Shout out. You can come out. Thomas Cohen to cap the night off. The final of the four groups. I'm going to take another look at that second half. And this is where we're, as a judge, you're kind of counting down, narrowing the group down, refining the, the qualities that you think are the strongest in virtue, and then awarding those. Judging's not about really faulting the dogs. It's, it's about looking for the positive in the dog. And we, we always want to say that dog had this great thing about it. We, we don't want to look at the negative of a dog. Every dog has a little fault here and there. Uh, we all do. Speak for yourself. <laughs> I, I was wondering if Gail was going <laughs> to I, I, I opened the door for you on that one. <laughs> right. But he is taking a very close look. Well, it's a very strong group. There are a lot of really nice dogs out here, top winning dogs that perform very well tonight. And he's a quintessential expert in this group. I mean, this man has done everything in the group and, and knows the details of all of these dogs. We're going to start a line over here. Shepard out to start the line. Right, there you go. Shepherds have dominated this group. You're going out. The Norwegian bull hunt. Mm -hmm. You're going out. The Shetland Sheepdog is on three. That's oh. good. So That's he certainly appreciates the qualities of it. Your dog out. Australian Shepherd.
Bouvier. Bouvier. Very nice. Cardigan. Cardigan and the rough collie. There's a rough collie out there. I see the Pembroke, please. Came back and got one more. That's why okay, you never, thank you never quit out there. <laughs> That's you right. never quit. Keep showing. Let's all back up. Going to go around one at a time, not too fast. I'll signal you when. Okay. He has command of his ring. That's the way you want to do it. You want to see the dogs presented the right way. Shepard, that beautiful flying trot. Norwegian Bruhan. This is such a striking Five. dog. Yeah, just striking. Shetland, cheap dog. Moving effortlessly. First ribbon. Love that she just game. floats, doesn't Love she? That just, game. just amazing. And a beautiful pace, too. The Bouvier de Flanders. Excellent reaching That's drive. That's beautiful. As well. Yeah, he's That's got some be beautiful tough. dogs. Yeah, you guys sure, yeah. yeah. The more you look, the more the difficult the work. <laughs> Light on his feet. Really showing, isn't it? Yeah. The rough poly. And the Pembroke Corgi. Shetland sheep uh, and the German Shepherd is fourth. That's awesome. Okay, the Australian Shepherd is first. The Bouvier is second. The Sheltie is third. Shepherd is fourth. Uh, wonderful job. Ribbon. The Australian Shepherd just looked amazing oh, tonight, did. didn't she? Well, Jessica Pluribus is her second time with winning the group. Fabulous. She's really on her game. That dog looked perfect. You could have asked for more on the way she showed. She just came out and asked for it. And you know when he said just at the nice pace to go around, she floated. And it wasn't too rushed or hurried. We're through four groups. Gail, Jason, what stood out tonight? I mean, moments ago, that was a tough call. It seemed like each group as we went on and on got a little tougher to make that decision for the group winner. Yeah, I, I thought this herding group was stellar today. And, you know, that dog, along with the other three winners, is going to be really competitive. It is. So. I, I think Ribbon was in perfect form, conditioning, not a foot wrong, not a piece of fur wrong. <laughs> she looked fabulous. Australian Shepherd has yet to win Best in Show. This could be the year. Let's go over to Jamie Little. What a beautiful, beautiful dog. We talked to you earlier, Jessica, about Ribbon. What sets this dog apart and stood apart tonight? You know, when she just flies around the ring, she's just effortless when she moves, and she, the crowd just loves her. <laughs> what is she like away from the show ring? Uh, she is, she's a blast. She's like the, the fun girl at the party. <laughs> Sounds like a good time. Best of luck tomorrow night. You're going to Best in Show. Yes, we are. Thank you very much. I think Ribbon had a good time tonight. Jenny? Ribbon, loving the energy of the crowd, and a big congratulations as well. To the Australian Shepherd, our herding group winner. We're going to rack up the night when we return. Don't go anywhere.